This video is a deep dive into the counter inventory add-on. This guide focuses all the way from purchase ordering and procuring your stock, all the way through to building recipes from your purchased stock to your sold stock, and then how selling items impacts your inventory, and how you can also calculate floating cost prices and cost prices within products. To start with, within a particular site, you will need to have the counter inventory add-on enabled. You can enable this in your site under add-ons and counter inventory. Click the add-on and click enable. Now once the add-on is enabled, you will see you have purchases and stock count appear in the top bar in your sites menu. Another add-on that is very useful to enable when tracking inventory is the wastage add-on. You can enable the wastage add-on here in the same way you enabled the inventory add-on, which will give you this wastage tab under your sites menu and it'll also let you waste items on the point of sale. Now to start with, inventory is all about the flow of products through your particular site. So we'll start with getting products to your site. Before you begin the journey of an inventory through your, through your site, um, you'll need to order that inventory and that's where the purchases tab comes in. Purchase ordering within counter is very, very simple. You simply add a supplier to the purchase order, which you've added in people. Under contacts, this is where you add all of your suppliers. So I will add my, uh, myself to this purchase order that we're making. There we go. You can either let counter automatically assign a purchase order number or assign your own. Likewise, when you get an invoice, you can add the supplier invoice number. And then we go to adding products. So I'm going to add a kilogram of bacon. You can choose purchasing formats if you've set them up and I'll show you how to set them up in the future. Add a quantity here, so 12 kilograms of bacon, and then a unit price. This has been taken from my uh, average floating cost price. But say I have a new price here, I'll enter that. It'll automatically update my purchase order, and then I can press the plus to add this item to the purchase order. And so on and so forth. We'll purchase some butter here. And I'll add that there. Now we can add any notes to our purchase order that we would like to. For example, need by Friday. Camera in the back. So on and so forth. And then once we've added our, our notes that are relevant, we can save this as a draft. Now a draft purchase order is extremely useful because you can save a draft of a purchase order that you do regularly and then simply copy the purchase order, change the quantities, and then email the, email the purchase order. Wednesday and Friday, you can make a standard bread draft purchase order, and then copy, enter your quantities, and email it to your supplier. Copy, quantities, and email. It's a very nice duplication process for doing the same purchase order over and over again. Uh, in this case, this is just a one-off purchase order that we'd like to generate. So there are a couple of things that we can do. You can preview the PDF of your purchase order, And that will look like this. You can email the purchase order and that'll ask you for details on who it's from, who it's to, and any CCs that you'd like on this purchase order. And then this copy button we've already spoken about. Once this purchase order has arrived, it'll still be in a draft format. We can click on the amount here and add how many we've received, and then click on received. And this will automatically add to our stock numbers. And it will show us the purchase order here. Now there's another way you can get stock into your venue if you don't necessarily purchase it for the first time. And that would be in the sites menu, 
choosing your particular site, and under stock count. So performing a stock count is what you do to start with to give counter the um, amount of inventory that you have and then ultimately what you do regularly to make sure you're not losing any inventory or there are no variants in your inventory numbers. Stock counts are very easy to perform. You simply click on new stock count, generate a stock sheet, which will generate it for your entire product list. You can also in that previous step select certain tags you'd like to filter by in order to do partial stock counts. Then you enter in your counted quantities and click save. The counted quantities will update in your inventory and you'll be presented with a report showing you total variance value and you can go digging into where that, uh, that variance has occurred. So now that we've purchase ordered and we've done a stock count to give us accurate inventory in our venue, we need to start looking at ways of taking from that inventory when we're selling to customers. So we don't necessarily sell bacon and butter in kilograms. We sell it in a delicious brekkie roll, for example. So I'll go into my brekkie roll here. And you can see I have all of my product settings. And I have an inventory option once I've turned the inventory add-on on. Now there's a couple of options you can select with a product. This product is, and then either made here or purchased. If you select purchased, you can select a purchasing format, for example, boxes of 12, but that doesn't make much sense for my brekkie roll. My brekkie roll is actually a product that is made here. Now when you select made here, you get this recipe builder underneath your uh, made here selection. So you can add a component. You can see I've added a couple beforehand here. I've got a kilogram of bacon, but I'm not putting a whole kilogram into this brekkie roll. I'm actually putting 52 grams. So you can see my quantity here is 0.052. Likewise, with my kilogram of butter, I'm putting 6 grams in, 0.006. Box of eggs, 150. And I've got two eggs in here. And then a tray of rolls, 50. I've got a single roll. Um, so as you go through and you're purchasing trays in 50s, but you're selling one roll at a time, you can accurately debit that using these decimals. And counter can sense very long stream decimals, so you can do things like debiting a very small amount of beer out of an entire keg and still keep things accurate. Click save once we've added all our components. Now when we sell this item, we'll be debiting little parts of all of our purchased items. So purchase order and coming in one end and our items being sold out the other end is now kept accurate. You can always account for variance in these numbers. Um, and if you waste anything, which we'll go through in a moment, that will take out of inventory as well. So there's two ways we can waste. It's either from back office, insights, and wastage. And this is better for bulk removing of, uh, of products or bulk wasting of products because you can do it quite quickly. So I'd like to record the wastage at the end of a day. And I am going to record that we had five kilograms of bacon that was expired and also that we pre-made a brekkie roll. We pre-made 10 of them and they all went to waste. So we threw those out as well. Um, now we can also use other reasons. For example, staff error, unsold stock, service recovery, staff consumption, so on and so forth. So we've got those options under reasons, and you can apply them to different products that are wasted. And then click save wastage. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna remove these items from inventory and create a wastage record for them, which is quite important there. If we go to the point of sale, we can also waste things as things are happening from the point of sale, which is also quite important. So it's not a big, slow process to waste things and then that wastage doesn't end up getting recorded. And so this is a great process for wasting things like a dropped coffee or someone's meal that maybe was prepared incorrectly. It's a very, very quick process. We go into menu, add-ons and wastage. And then we click the wastage button select a product. So in this case, I'll select a latte. Reason was staff error and quantity is one.
okay, record wastage. And that will, this will pull out the latte from my inventory. Now keep in mind that latte was actually a product made up of some milk, some coffee, a cup, and a lid. So it's instead of wasting a single latte from my inventory, from my inventory it's actually wasted a small portion of milk, a lid, a cup, and a small portion of coffee. So that that is all kept accurate. Now the final thing that we'll want to, to look at, because we've looked at purchasing and the inventory flow, is the financial implications there. So because we're registering when we're purchase ordering cost prices for our products, Counter will automatically keep track of your purchase ordering over a 30-day period and give you an average cost price. That average cost price against the sell price for your products will be accessible in your sales buy report. So I'm going to see for all of my products today that I have, I have the quantity, the percentage of quantity, my sale amount, my cost amount, my percentage of sale, and then my GP percentage. So you can see here the GP percentage is how much margin I am making on these particular products, and that's made from my average floating cost price of the components that are building up these products. So to break that down a little bit, if you add some milk, some coffee, a lid, and a cup to a latte, then that particular product will be made up of portions of each of the larger purchase prices for those purchased items, and then you'll get a cost price. And then your GP is made up of the sale amount against the cost price. So a high GP is good, and a negative GP, you're actually losing money every time you sell something. So that more or less rounds out inventory within Counter. Um, now, you don't necessarily need to be doing purchase ordering to get this cost price reporting. You can simply go into a product, like my Brecky Roll. I'll use that as an example again. And if you're not doing purchase ordering, you can add a cost price in, and Counter will use that cost price instead of the purchase ordering cost price. Now, if you are purchase ordering, it's going to use the floating purchase ordering cost, which is going to be more accurate, and it's going to move over time without you having to worry about maintaining this field here. Keep in mind, though, that this field won't update. You'll need to go to your reports to see your cost price. And that's more or less an end-to-end -end guide for Counter Inventory. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can get in touch with our support team at support at counter.com.